studying the infinitely small in order to understand the infinitely big. That's the mantra of the researchers at CERN in Geneva, where we are today. In this episode of Global Conversation, we're going to try to understand how far the boundaries of knowledge can go. Our guest is Fabiola Giannotti, Director General of CERN. Thanks for being with us. In recent days, the particle accelerator's activity was restarted following months of technical breakdowns. Can you tell us how this huge machine, which is investigating the mysteries surrounding the matter that makes up our universe, works? The Large Hadron Collider is the most powerful accelerator ever built by man. It allows us to launch proton beams in opposite directions within a 27-kilometer ring, where they collide in four parts where four large detectors are installed. And thanks to these collisions, we're able to study the fundamental elements of matter and of the universe, and to better understand the fundamentals in nature and the structure and the evolution of the universe. The Large Hadron Collider today is more powerful than when the Higgs boson was discovered. What are your scientific goals? What do you hope to discover? For example, we would like to better understand what the so-called dark side of the universe is made of. In fact, what is visible when we look at stars, planets and galaxies only represents 5% of the universe. The other 95% is made up of matter and energy that we don't know. And this is a big question mark for us. And that's why we call it dark matter and energy. These dark forms of matter and energy do not directly interact with our instruments, such as telescopes telescopes, for example. We deduct their presence from indirect observations and evidence. You've been Director General of CERN since January 2016. How has your first year and a half been? In one interview you said it was like being the mayor of a small village. It's an enriching and stimulating job that has many different sides to it. There's the scientific side, which is of course my priority, and takes most of my time, managing scientific projects, planning the future. But there are also other aspects, like dealing with the budget, the staff, international relations. So it's an enriching and varied job, and the thing I appreciate the most is that I'm learning something every day. In my opinion, there's nothing more rewarding than coming home at night and saying, look at what I learned today. Let's look back to the 4th of July 2012 when CERN told the world about the discovery of the Higgs boson, which is critical to understanding the origin of the mass of particles. What are your memories of that day? How did you feel? Well, clearly, it was a very beautiful day, professionally, and perhaps the most exciting day of my life. That day I was representing a community of physicists from all over the world, but also many young people who'd worked with enthusiasm and dedication both to build our machine and then to analyse the data. So I was proud of being able to say, today we have contributed to helping progress our understanding of humanity one small step forward. It was very beautiful and moving. Thanks to this amazing machine, the LHC, are you any closer to understanding the Big Bang? Well, we're closer to understanding the characteristics and evolution of the universe in the instance that followed the Big Bang. We know what happened a millionth of a millionth of a second after the Big Bang. It seems like nothing, but in fact a lot happened before that. We're still far from understanding what really happened at the exact moment of the Big Bang. There are various hypotheses, but we have made important progress in understanding what really happened in the early phases of the universe's evolution. What do you think of scientific research in Europe? Are there enough opportunities for young researchers? 
c'è un po' un, in generale un, un problema di finanziamento della ricerca fondamentale. Generally speaking, there are problems securing funds for fundamental research, which are more or less serious depending on the country. Applied research tends to get funding more easily as it yields results in the short term. Of course it's important to fund applied research, but we must not forget that fundamental research is equally important, although results cannot be seen immediately, but in the long term. Einstein said, logic will take you from A to B, imagination will take you everywhere. What role do fantasy and passion play in the work of a scientist? Fundamentale. They are fundamental. Eh, la, la, la Science and research are based on ideas and creativity. Sulla, sulle idee. Ideas, creativity, imagination idee, are fundamental. La fantasia, But you also need great sono, dedication sono for these ideas to be put into practice. Passion, motivation, creativity are fundamental to what we do here. Sono veramente i motori fondamentali di quello che noi facciamo. Passion and fantasy is what dreams are made of. What were your dreams as a child? When did you realize you wanted to become a scientist? When I was a small child, I had exotic dreams. There was a time when I was studying classical dance and I wanted to become a dancer. Then I studied the piano and was thinking of a career as a musician. Music still holds a very important place in my life. But I was a very curious child and I used to ask a lot of questions. And then, through my physics and math classes in high school, I found that working in the field of physics, which is perhaps the most fundamental of all sciences, would allow me to satisfy this curiosity. Soddisfare questa sete di risposte, questa curiosità. Lei qui al CERN è circondato da. Here at CERN you're surrounded by highly elaborate machines. But in your everyday life, what is your relationship to technology? La uso come una normale. I use it as a tool to make life easier and more enjoyable. But there's also a negative impact on our everyday life. Sometimes technology turns us into slaves. Nowadays we always have to be accessible by phone, email, SMS, etc. So you have to be careful not to let innovation take over and not to become addicted. Thank you, Fabiola. Thank you.